Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Melissa, and I'm a fifth grade teacher at a local school called Corrales International School. Today, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the U.S. Census and a big word called apportionment. So, what exactly is the U.S. Census? The U.S. Census is a count of all the people in a country and it is carried out every 10 years. This year, we we're being counted for the 2020 census, and the last census was carried out in 2010. So let's talk about some big words, and the word apportionment is gonna come back again so that you all know what it means. The first big word is called representative. A representative is a person that represents a group of people. So one person, is chosen, we vote for people for our government to represent a large group of people. Did you know, boys and girls, that every representative that we have in New Mexico actually represents 700,000 people? Population. The word population means the number of people in a certain area. What do you think, boys and girls? How many people do you think Albuquerque has? 500,000? One million people. Apportionment. Here is the next big word. Apportionment is actually the number of members with each U.S. state that each U.S. state sends to the House of Representatives. And it is actually based on our population. So I think this map is pretty cool, guys, because it not only shows the United States, but it shows how many representatives are in each state. So let's find New Mexico right here. We have three different people in the House of Representatives that represent what we would like in our government. Because Texas, for example, has many more people, the population is larger, it has a whopping 36 House of Representatives members. Isn't that crazy? The U.S. House of Representatives, what exactly is that? Well, it's a part of the U.S. government specifically Congress, responsible for making our nation and our state laws. Some of these laws are what rules we have for driving and even how our local schools are run. So basically, we are the ones that vote for people called representatives. Apportionment means how many we have in our state and the U.S. House of Representatives stands is where they go and work. Who are these representatives, you might wonder? We have three of them, like I said before. The first one is Ben Ray Lujan from Nambe, New Mexico. Our third is Deb Hallen from the Laguna Pueblo. And Social Torres Flaw from Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'll talk a little bit more about them now. Let's start with Ben Ray Lujan. So Ben Ray Lujan was actually elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 2008. He is from this little area right here, this county. He has helped in issues or policies with energy, education, and Native Americans. Deb Holland, she was elected in 2018, and she's one of the first Native American women to be elected to Congress. She is involved with committees for armed forces and natural resources, and her tribe or her area is right here, the Laguna Pueblo tribe. Last but not least, we have Social Torres Small. She was also elected in 2018 and is involved with women's issues and Hispanic communities. So she's from Las Cruces, which is down over here. So how does representation work? Let's talk a little bit more about that. So the U.S. House of Representatives is made up of 435 people that come from all over the United States and represent our needs and wants to the U.S. government. They help make nation and statewide laws. This is how it works. So again, New Mexico is right here. We have three representatives that go and make help and make our laws for our country. New Mexico's representatives. Remember, apportionment means the number of members each U.S. state sends to the House of Representatives based on its population. So because we have, in 2000, let's start with that. In 2000, our population was 1,823,821. Our representatives were three. Now, boys and girls, our representatives work in that for every 700,000 people we have, we get one representative. 
So because we have 18 around 1,800,000 uh, in 2000, we had three representatives. Now, in 2010, our population did grow. It grew from 1,800,000 to actually 2,067,273 people. Because it did not grow 700 more, we still stayed with three representatives. So let's ask some questions about that information that we just had. What do you notice about that information? In 2000, we had almost 2 million people in New Mexico, while in 2010, we just had a bit over. Notice that our number of New Mexico representatives did not change and remained at three. Again, that's because we didn't have a growth of more than 700,000. But even though in 2010, we did have more people. So question two, based on the trend in our data, which is information with numbers that we just saw and that is now below, do you predict that New Mexico's population will increase or decrease in 2020 and why? So let's look at this information right here, boys and girls. We had our population 2000 of 200, well, actually this is supposed to say 210. So in 210, we had 2,067,000. And in 2000, we had 1,800,000. So it did grew, it did grow. Do you think it's gonna grow again in 2020? The population will most likely increase because it did increase in 2010 to over 2 million from about 1,800,000 from 2000. So as you can see, a population is growing. So most likely we will have an increase this year. Question three, based on your prediction in question two, do you think New Mexico's number of representatives will increase, decrease, or stay the same after the 2020 census? So boys and girls, we have three representatives now. We had in 2003, the population grew some, but do you think our population is gonna grow another 700,000 to gain a fourth representative? Using the information here in our chart, or the one that we had, our number of New Mexico representatives might stay the same, since we have to have over 700,000 or more people to gain a fourth representative, even though that would be pretty cool. So, probably not. Question four. Based on what you learned today, why is it important to get an accurate count of the population? What do you think, boys and girls? Why do you think it's an, a really important to get an accurate count of all the people in New Mexico? It's important that we get an accurate count of the population because we want to make sure that we have enough representatives to represent us in Congress. We want to make sure that our voices are heard, boys and girls, that what we want in New Mexico is also heard in our Congress, that people know that we want maybe better roads or better, more um, technology for our schools even. We want to make sure to have our voices heard and not, to, and not have any representatives taken away if not everybody is counted. Imagine, boys and girls, if we didn't have people counted and we didn't have our three representatives and one was taken away because people were not counted. That would be awful. So this is what we learned in summary. In conclusion, we learned that the census count allows the U.S. government to determine how many U.S. representatives each state gets. New Mexico has three representatives. Do you remember their names? One was Social Torres Small, a second one, and she was elected in 2018. A second is Deb Holland, and our, she also was elected in 2018. And our third is Ben Ray Lujan, and he was elected in 2008. Finally, the government will be counting every person in our country again in the 2020 census. It's really important that we are all counted so that we can get the right number of representatives. Thank you so much for joining me, boys and girls. My name is Miss Melissa, and thank you for joining us at, APA, at APS at Home. Have a great day. Good morning, kiddos. We're so glad to have you back for At Home with APS. Today, is, hmm, what day is today? Yesterday was the 7th, 
of July. So that means today must be the 8th of July. And we know what day of the week it is. Well, I can tell you that yesterday was Tuesday. So that means today must be Wednesday. And what day of the week will tomorrow be? That's right, tomorrow will be Thursday. Nice job. Let's go ahead and work on our pattern for the month. Um, when we add our shape to today's date, the eighth, we will have completed a second cycle of our pattern. So can you look at our first four days of the month to help you figure out what shape will be next in our pattern? You are right. It is going to be a green quadrilateral, which is also a square, right? What do you think will be on our pattern for tomorrow if today was a green square? That's right, it's going to be a red circle because we're going to start our pattern all over again tomorrow. Let's go ahead and fill in our day, our date on our 10 frame. So yesterday was the seventh, so we have five dots across the top and two on the bottom. So we're gonna add one more, five, Filling the top, three on the bottom, and we know that five and three gives us eight, which is our number of the day. So let's go ahead and talk about our number of the day. Our number of the day is eight. I like eight because it's a very circly number. I like to draw it and write it. So here's how we write eight. It is a one digit number, right? Because we haven't yet made it to a 10. How many are we away from 10? Can you tell by our frame? Just two, very good. Now, how do we write eight as a word? It's very tricky to spell. It sounds short and sweet, but it's long and complicated. So eight sounds like it starts with an A, but it starts with an E, that's pretty tricky. And the next letter it gets is an I, eight. The next sound I hear is T, but guess what? We've got some silent letters in there, a G and an H, and then finally we get to write the T for that T ending sound, eight. What a very interesting word, isn't it? So what are some other ways we could represent eight? Well, again, I'm thinking about um, some of our domino patterns, right? And so eight, we can make as a double. We can make as a double with dots. We can also make it as a double on a frame. Here we have our five plus three to make eight, but here's another way to make eight using a double. What numbers am I putting together? How many on top? Four. And how many on the bottom? Four. So we can make eight by using two fours, right? Four plus four gives us eight. We could show that on a frame like we just did here. We could also see an eight maybe when we roll dice or if we're playing with dominoes and we get that double four dot pattern. That's another way for eight, right? Thinking about our frame that's on our calendar, we could show eight as how many on top again? Five plus three more is another way we can get eight. What if we showed it as subtraction? Again, thinking about our frame. 
We have our five wise frame here, five plus three. We have our pairwise frame here, four plus four. How many are missing from the 10 whenever we have eight? Either way, two, right? So we could show eight with subtraction as 10 minus two equals eight. All right, let's think about our hundreds chart. So eight goes here in the middle, right? All right. What number comes right after eight? Eight, nine, you got it. So then what number would come right before eight? We can look at our calendar to help. It was yesterday's number of the day, wasn't it? Seven. Seven comes right before eight when we're counting. Now, we don't have our hundreds chart right out, but can we make that big jump back of 10 from eight on our hundreds chart? We cannot. But can we make a big jump down to the next row, a big jump of 10 forward? Yes, we can. What is 10 more than eight? That's right. It is 18. 18 is a 10 plus eight ones for 18. All right. So I think we're ready for our counting jar. Today we're going to count buttons. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. How many buttons do we have all together? That's right, we have 19. So, if you are in kindergarten, we want you to see if you can find 19 things to count, right? That's 10 things plus nine more, okay? Now, if you're in first grade, we want you to try to double this. Could be tough to double 19 when we're just thinking about adding our numbers together. But guess what, I'm gonna use 20. 19 is just one away from 20. So 20 plus 20 gives me 40, and that's too, too many. So I'm gonna count those back off. 40, 39, 38. Two collections of 19 things would make 38 things. And if you are a second grader, you're gonna double that 38. So I'm gonna think about 30 plus 30. That's 60, and then eight plus eight is 16. Put 30 and 16 together. I get, I mean 60 and 16 together, I get 76. 76 things if you're in second grade. This is your counting jar assignment for today. We have uh, a couple of vocabulary words to add before we turn it over to Mrs. Obenchain. Before, and after. And I just use a little star to help us think about these words. So if something is before, then it usually comes, ooh, before, then it usually comes in front of something else if you're looking on a piece of paper. Or if you're thinking about saying something, it's the thing you say first. Like if we're counting, we say one first before we say two. If something is after, then it usually comes behind something else, like if you're reading on a piece of paper. Or again, if you're saying something, it's kind of the order that you say it. So if we were counting and we said two, we would say three after two. It would be the next thing we would say. So we're gonna think about those words today. 
Oh. Hmm. We lost our tape. All right. So I think we're going to pop this up and Mrs. Obenshane is going to come out and we are ready to go. All right, I'm going to erase your today's number and we will get part of our activity up here. I zoom in here a little bit. There, I'll just use the plus sign. Okay, we're going to use that. And I'm going to move our vocabulary out of our way because in a minute we're going to need our spinner. All right, we are going to do a little bit of thinking about adding and subtracting. I'm going to change this. No, I'm gonna use this. So I can show you what I'm doing under here. We're gonna do some counting of counters in a row, and we're gonna think about what happens when we're adding some counters and what happens when we're taking them away. So I want you to count with me. Oh, we gotta to have to zoom that out to start. Oh, there it is, we can see it. All right. Can see our counter? So we have one counter right there. Count with me. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What if I put one more down? What would be next? Right, nine. And then what? Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. We'll see how many we can fit on here. What would be after 14? 15, 16, 17, 18. I think we can pretty much get 18 here, maybe if we slide over just a tiny bit. So I have 18 counters, right? And did you notice that when I was counting these counters, I was counting forward, right? I was saying the numbers from one up to, to 18 forward. You can also count backwards. And when you're counting backwards, you're taking things away, right? We talked about subtracting makes the amount smaller and adding makes the amount bigger. So we were adding counters as we counted forward. And now we're going to count backwards and we're going to subtract counters. So we had how many counters? Do you remember? 18. So if I take one away, how many are left? 17. 16. 15. 14. 13. What if I take another one away? What's before 13? 12. 11, 10, what's before 10? Nine, right, do you see how I'm using those, that language that Ms. Karnas was just talking about? Before, when we're counting backwards, we're going to the numbers that are before. So we have nine, eight, seven, six, five, what's before five? Four, three, two, one. And if we take the last one away, zero. Exactly. All right. So what we're going to do is thinking about our dots in a row. I'm going to use this dot strip. And it has five, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. What's five and five again? Ten, right? So I'm going to put that down. There are 10 counters under there. I put them face down so you can't see them. What if I add three more counters to that? How many are we going to have? We had 10 on our strip. 
right? One more would be what? What would be the number after 10? 11, 12, 13, right? And we could even check that by counting all the way from one if we wanted to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's what we had on our strip. 11, 12, 13. So there's two ways to solve that, right? Let's try another one. Look at this strip. There's five and another five and two more. Did you notice how I put these dots in groups? We've been talking a lot about groups and how it's important to see and notice the groups and use them to help you think more efficiently about adding and subtracting. So we have five and five. How much was that again? 10 and 11, 12. I'm going to put 12 under here. What if I add four more this time? 12 and four. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Exactly. We can also do subtraction this way. We'll go back to our row of counters that we had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's see if we can get fifteen on there. There's fifteen counters there. What if I cover up those last two counters that I put on there? I, it's like I'm taking them away. 15 and I covered up two or I took two away. We could count backwards. 15, 14, so there must be 13 left, right? We could count forward to check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What if... I covered three. That would be just one more, right? 15, 14, 13, so there's 12. What if I came to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? 10. This is the 10th counter, and I am going to cover up two. No, I'm gonna do three. Three of the counters that are in front of 10. If this is 10, we'll move it up a little bit so we remember, what's the last counter that I covered? So this was 10, so this would be nine, eight, seven. It must be seven that I covered up, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. So we're gonna use some of our adding and subtracting skills and we're gonna just play a little bit of a game and this game there's a version of it for you on the website so that you can, oh, I gotta go here. There it is. And we need a pen. All right, so we can mark it off. So how this game goes is that Ms. Karnas is gonna help me and Yay. she's gonna roll a dice. I'm gonna use the spinner. So you could either use a dot dice or a spinner and the dot dice or the spinner say one to six. And so we get to decide, do we want to add or subtract what we roll from this in order to cover the whole board? So sometimes we might not want to add. Sometimes we might want to subtract. So let's see how this goes. I'll spin first to show how it goes a little bit. And if you're playing with a partner on this, you can just talk out which decision you think you should make. So I rolled a three. So, Ms. Karnas, I could use six minus three, because that's a double, and cover up the three. Mm -hmm. But I could also use six plus three and cover up the nine. Yes. What well, do you think? Well, I think when we're just starting, you Does can kind of really you can kind of do whatever, and then we'll sort of know what All to right. do next. I'm gonna use that double and I'm gonna take away three from six. So we'll cross that one out. Nice. And I rolled while Mrs. Obenchain was spinning, and I got a one. So hmm, should I add or subtract? It's still pretty wide open, right? So I think um, for this one, I'll go, I'm going to add. And I'm going to add one to nine. What mm -hmm. does that give me? 
One plus nine, or so nine plus one. If she has nine and she adds one, how many would she have? So we could use our 10 frames also to help us. So the version that I put on the website for you, there's some 10 frames there that you could build it on. And I could just use X, huh? Yeah, just you could just use X, because we're, we're trying to work together to cover the board. So we, we're working together on this one. All right, let's spin and see what we get. I got a four this time. So let's see. I'm thinking about the one that Ms. Carnes just did, right? If I have nine, if I start from this top one and I take away four, I could cross out the five. But I also could use the double, right? I could use, use the eight and take four away. So what do you think? Should I do four or five? Do you think it matters right now? I don't think it matters. I like using doubles though. Me too. So I think I'm gonna do that again. I also rolled a four. So let's think about what I Oh, well, you could do. do the other thing, huh? I could do the other thing. So then I could use nine and take four away. And how many did we say that would be? Remember what it looked like? You take that whole bottom and you'd have how many? That's right. We'd have five, right? Empty the bottom row and leave the top row full. Oh, I spun another three. Okay. So... Let's see, six minus three, we already know is three, so that one's gone. What about six plus three? I could also count, right? I could count on six, seven, eight, nine. So we could mark the nine or seven, eight, nine, 10. That one's already gone. Eight, nine, 10, 11. What do you think? Should I use an 11 just because we haven't used Let's a use big, a big number? number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. And I had rolled a five for this next turn. So let's think about that. Hmm. I think I might want to subtract and practice uh, Ooh. some of my counting back. So let's see then. Well, I don't, if I want to subtract, I don't have too many choices, do I? Yeah. I could count back from six. So if I have six and I count back five, I get five, four, three, two, one. It'd be like taking that whole row away, huh? Mm -hmm. We're gonna go with one. All right, we might be able to get one more roll in and mm -hmm. then we're gonna have to move on and read our book. But I rolled a two and so I'm gonna try counting backwards also. So eight, seven, six. I could cross off the six. So we're getting closer. And I think as you get down into these last ones, it gets a little trickier, right? Because you have to get right just the right number combination. And then you have to decide whether you're adding or subtracting. So you have to use a little logic, like we talked about yesterday, and strategy to figure out how you're going to get this whole game board covered. So there's one of these for you to practice on at home as well. And I think right now, then, we're ready for Miss Carnes to read us a story. Excellent. Are you guys ready? I am ready. Let's I'll get this see. out of here. And we actually don't think we need that anymore. Great. I'm going to switch over. We're going to use our document camera today to help us read our story because it has some small pictures in it. Today's story is going to be about buttons, just like our counting jar. We counted buttons. We're going to do some more math with buttons. How about that? Okay, let's see. I think I might need to make sure everything fits. I think we're good. Okay, guys. So this story is called The Button Box. And it was written by Margaret S. Reed, and it was illustrated by Sarah Chamberlain, and it is a puffin unicorn book. So let's read about the button box. Do any of you have a button box or a box of things you've collected at home? It can be fun to look through. My grandma has a special box. I like to play with what's inside. Oh! <gasps> Those buttons, 
so interesting. There's so many kinds. I swirl the buttons round and round, and then I pick the ones I like. Ten have flowers painted on them, just like Grandma's china dishes. I like to sort them first. Did you know there were ten buttons in this picture? How did you know? It's showing us the double, right? Five on top, five on bottom. It looks like a fancy ten frame, doesn't it? Ten fancy buttons. Next, I look for sparkly buttons. I pretend they're jewels that once belonged to kings and queens and movie stars. Some buttons are covered with cloth, satin, velvet, or corduroy. Those are all kinds of cloth that our clothes are made out of. They make me think of fancy clothes. There are metal buttons from overalls and jeans and leather ones from cowboy shirts and sweaters. Can you use the pattern here to see how many buttons? I see four shiny buttons and four leather buttons. What's that double, four plus four? You know it. There's eight buttons on this page, and I bet you didn't even have to count. This one looks like one from Grandpa's winter coat. Grandma says these small ones came from shoes worn a long time ago. Next, I sort the shiny buttons that come from uniforms. I line them up like marchers in a big parade. Look at all the patterns used on this page to show these buttons. Do you think we could count them up real quick using some patterns we know? Let's try, let's try. So I see two, four, four buttons here, right? Then I see a double here, three and three, that's six. It's four and six. It's 10, you're right. So 10 so far, three more, 13. And then I see two more, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, right? One more gives us 20. And then we have these five, 25. 25 and three more gives us 28. 29, 30, 31. 31 and three gives us how many? 31, 32, 33, 34. What's four and three? Seven. So then we have 37. 37 plus three gets us 40. Here's three more, 43 plus one big button, 44. We were able to count those pretty fast using groups. The one with the eagle I call Mr. President. I pull out all the pearly ones and make a rainbow pattern. When does little change to big? I can never tell. Some buttons have four holes and some have two. Some don't have any sewing holes. They have shanks instead. Those are like little wire loops that you use to sew your buttons on. These make good eyes on puppets or stuffed animals. Sometimes when grandma sorts with me, we play a special game. We stir the buttons, shut our eyes, and then we each take one. Grandma asks, are they alike? Mine is wooden, so is hers. Both are round and flat, but hers is thick and mine is thin. She puts my button on a string. Whirl it around, she says. The string twists up. I pull the ends. We listen to it hum. That is a fun toy that you can make out of a button, and I bet you could find directions for how to do that online. Grandma tells me what some buttons used to be. Some were seashells. Some were even sand. Big furnaces, that's like a big giant oven, heat the sand until it melts. When it cools, it's glass. Wooden buttons come from trees. Deer shed antlers every winter and grow new ones in the spring. I like buttons made from their old horns. Wow, did you know that? When it's time to put the buttons back, I pretend I'm very rich, counting all my gold. I like to feel the buttons then, the bumpy and the smooth. I like the way they sound. Clickety-tappity, falling through my fingers, 
one by one into the box. Then grandma puts the box away where it will wait until next time. I wonder who first figured buttons out. That is a good question. I'm sure buttons have a very interesting history. So we are going to now use buttons to figure out subtraction. Today is a, is a very, a day all about lots of subtraction, right? And when we're thinking about subtraction, it means we are taking away. So I want you to know that on our resource site, there is a page just like this with a shirt on it that you could print out. You could draw a shirt on a piece of paper or just play along with us without even using this paper. And you might have buttons you can use or you might have beans or paper clips, any small little thing that you can count. All right. We're gonna do a little charting too. So I'm gonna move our calendar. And pull this chart up close. There we go. All right. There we go. Great, I think we're okay here. Okay, so we have our chart. We're gonna be thinking about lost buttons today. So we're gonna take our picture of our shirt that we have here, and we're gonna put some buttons on it. Let's put six buttons on our shirt. Help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we have six buttons on our shirt. So, what if I lost two buttons from my shirt? So I had six, but I lose two. Wonder how many would be left? You could think about it in a couple of ways, right? We could just take away two and count how many are left. How many are left? Four, right? We could also use some strategies like you were using with Mrs. Obenchain. So there's a couple of ways to think about subtraction when you're taking things away. So I might think about this. How many buttons do we have here again? Six. So if I take one, that means six has gone away. And if I take another, that means five has gone away. So how many are left on my shirt? Four. That's another way to think about it. Let's go ahead and write a number sentence for this or add to our chart. And then we'll do a couple more. All right, so how many buttons did we start with again? There were six on our shirt, right? And how many buttons did we lose? How many were lost? Two. And how many buttons then were left? Four. All right. And if we added a subtraction sign here, a minus sign, we have, and an equal sign, a subtraction sentence, don't we? Six minus two equals four. Let's do another one. What if this time I had Eight buttons, eight buttons on my shirt. And what if I lost three of those buttons? It's another way we could think of that. So we might think about it this way, right? If I take away one button, there were eight, so now there's seven. If I take away two buttons, now there's six. If I take away three buttons, how many are left? It's five. And we could count to check, couldn't we? One, two, three, four, five. Or we might just know that we counted back and we know that's how many are left. And we might not have to recount them. Let's go ahead and record this one. So this time we started with 
eight buttons. And how many did we lose again? Oh, three, we lost three buttons. So we had five buttons left, didn't we? And we could turn that into a subtraction sentence too, couldn't we? Eight minus three equals five. Let's try another one. What if we had seven buttons on our shirt? Seven buttons on our shirt and what if we lost four buttons? Four buttons, okay, here we go. Ready? Seven buttons on our shirt. Let's try to count back for this one, right? Take away one, six, five, four, three. Are there three buttons left on my shirt? Yes, there are. And that time we just used counting back while we took those away. So that was seven. And we lost, oops, let's use green. We lost four buttons and there were three buttons left. I'm gonna ask you one more, it's a little tricky. We're gonna work with five for this one. So I had five buttons, this could be tricky, and I lost sum. Now there's only three left. How many buttons did I lose this time? Five buttons, I lost some, and there's three left. Can you figure out how many? How could we do it? We could count up maybe. Three, we need to get to five. Three, four, five. Let's check it. Three, four, five. There's the two buttons we lost. Nice job, guys. All right. You could think about subtraction like this at home, and you can also think about making a little number story to go with um, your buttons and your shirt. My shirt had blank buttons like six. We we'll use our first one. I lost two buttons and now I have four buttons left. And you can make your own little number story that way. And now we're gonna bring out Mrs. Obenshane to do our next piece with us. Okay, we've got a few minutes left for a game. Unfortunately, this is a game we've played before. So we'll move this button chart. I'm just gonna talk about our hundreds chart a little bit because you will remember we have talked about crossing the decade and that's going from one family to the next family. And all those numbers are going from a nine, a family that, a number that ends in nine and going to the next family and it starts with a zero, right? So 19, 20, 29, 30, 39, 40, 49, 50, 59, 60, 69, 70, 79, 80, 89, 90, 99, 100. Today, we've been doing a lot of work with subtraction, so we're gonna play the game backwards from the way that we played it the last time. We're gonna go from this number to the, to the nine number before it. Remember, there's that number before. So if we pick up a 20, and 20 starts with a two, we know it's gonna be a T number before it, and then they're always gonna end in nine, right? 30. My number before it, my family before the 30s is the 20s, and I can know three, two, and it's gonna end in nine, so it's gonna be 29. Okay, so we're gonna start from this side. For this game, you need the, the cards that have numbers ending in nine and numbers ending in zero, right? Just like on our hundreds chart. And that's there for you to, you can make the cards real easily or that's there for you to print. So Ms. Karnas and I are gonna play this game. I hope I can here. remember where some of the numbers are today. I know. Remember <laughs> last time we played this, sometimes we had a hard time remembering. So this is concentration. So we're trying to match, but we're always going to start on the right side. 
because we want to find the match of the number that's ending in nine, mm -hmm. we're going to go with the number before. Look what I got. I got 100. So the number before 100 is 99. So that's what I'm looking for. Let's see what I found. Did I find it? I got 29. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead, since sometimes I don't remember, and use that 100 and see if I can find a 99. So we know it's not there. Maybe it's here. Oh, not 99. What number is it? 49. What number would she have had to have? Mm. 50, huh? Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. I'm going to try a different one. We'll see how, how well I can remember things. 40. So this is a four. So the family before it is going to start with a three or the 30s. And it always is going to end a nine. So 39. Is that what we saw there? Maybe. Oh, no, I was close. close. It was 29. Yeah. I need 39. Let's see that. All right. OK, let's see. I'll choose this one. 20. Mm. What comes right before 20? It's a teen, right? That tricky teen. So it's going to have a one and a nine. It's 19. But can I find it? Oh, my goodness. Ooh, Look at she got that. lucky. She got a pair. I right off did. The first. 19 comes right All before right. 20. So this was our 40. We said we were looking for 39. So I'm going to try somewhere else and see what I find. Oh, 89. I didn't find it. I'm not having much luck today. All right, let's see. I think I'll see what's here. 80. What number am I looking for? I'm in the 80s. What's the family before? The 70s. And I'm looking for the last one, so 79. I don't know where it is. Maybe it's here? <gasps> no, but we'll need that one in the future, won't oh. we? This is 99. I remember where that one is, because I think I have a match. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where the match would be? What number is she looking for? Is that what I was looking for? 100. The number before 100 is 99. All right, I got a pair. Excellent. OK, let's see. This is where I start to forget where things are. Maybe we can each have one more turn, 60. maybe. Here's a 60. So the family before the 60s is the 50s, right? So I'm looking for 59. Hmm. Oh, close. 69. Well, I, she would have needed a 70. Do we have we seen that? Oh, 50. I think we've seen that one before, mm -hmm. right? The num family before the 50 starts with a four, so it's 49. Oh, no. Do you remember where it is? I don't think I remember where it is. I think this one was 29. Maybe it's this one. No, 89. Maybe Miss Carnes will get a pair. Okay, she I think might. we've Does got she remember? one more chance. No, I don't remember. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go for it. 60. Mm, what am I looking for? 59. Oh. Should have known that, wasn't it? 29. Well, we're going to be wrapping this up, so I guess we tied because we both got one pair. But mm -hmm. if you were playing this at home, you would just play till you had gotten all the pairs, and whoever gets the most pairs wins. Or you can play solitaire, and you just try to find all the pairs yourself. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have a partner, so that's kind of nice about this game. Yeah. And that's great practice, yeah. too. So let's just remember from today, we did our calendar, and so your counting collections, uh, counting jar assignment is either 19, 38 or 76 things. You can take a paper and fold it up into four and make different representations for eight if you didn't already do that. We played the cover it up game and you can practice adding and subtracting with that. And there's some 10 frames on that, that for you to help you out. And we read a button story, which was great. And then we've got this counting game for you to practice. So we hope you get some extra practice and we thank you for joining us today for at home with APS.